Well, earlier this evening, Kate was talking, Kate and Joe were talking about where we get our stories from. And I mentioned that I have, um, not, I don't know if I mentioned it on the air, but I have nine brothers and sisters, so you can imagine my family has lots of stories. But this story is really not about my family, but I feel my, uh, the presence of my brothers and sisters when I tell this story. And right now, um, in my family, my sister is battling breast cancer, my brother is battling prostate cancer. And so they're, my love for them is welling up oftentimes, as you can imagine. And so this story is The Seven Ravens by Grimm. And once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there lived a man and a woman with seven sons. Oh, but they wanted a daughter. So much they wanted a daughter. A daughter. Oh, a sweet little girl in the house. They loved their sons, of course, don't get me wrong, but to have a daughter would be so special. Well, once again, the mother was pregnant. And when the baby was born, the whole family rejoiced because it was a little baby girl. But soon it became very clear that the little girl was quite sick and she probably wouldn't live very long. And it was necessary to baptize her as quickly as possible. They couldn't wait for the parish priest to come. So the father sent the boys to the well to get some fresh water so they could baptize their little sister. When they got to the well, the brothers jostled and fought because they all wanted the honor of carrying the pitcher back to the house with the fresh water to baptize their little baby sister, who probably wouldn't be with them for very long. Well, in their jostling and pushing and shoving, the pitcher fell into the well. And all the boys stood there and wondered who would be brave enough to go and tell their father that they had lost the pitcher. Minutes passed. Soon a quarter of an hour went by and the father and mother were in the house wondering what could be taking those boys so long. And finally in his anger, their father said, those boys, they're no more good to me than a flock of ravens. And when he said those words, he looked out the window and flying by were seven ravens. And he knew that he had cursed his own sons. Well, the little girl did not, did not die. She lived, and she became healthy and strong. And just as they had, and had imagined a little girl to be, she was sweet, and she was lovely, and she was intelligent, and she was helpful, and they loved her dearly. But they could never bring themselves to tell her about her seven brothers who had disappeared on the day she was born. But you know, when she went out into the world to school and to the town, she heard stories about these seven brothers that she had had and how they had disappeared one day. And she went home and she said to her mother and father, is it true? Do I have seven brothers? Where are they? Well, they had to tell her the story. They told her not to blame herself, but of course she did. And she decided that she would go out into the world and she would find her brothers and she would bring them home again. And so one day she decided that was the day she would leave. She took with her a little ring of her mother's to remind herself of her mother and father back home. And she set out all alone into the world looking for her brothers. She went first far, far to the north, but it was so cold and barren there that surely her brothers couldn't stay there very long. And then she went far, far to the south where the hot sun burned her and she, oh, the sweat poured from her and she knew her brothers couldn't be there. And then she found herself in the land of the stars and the stars twinkled and they told her that no, they hadn't seen her brother, but they gave her a little story. They told her, that they had heard of a place where there was a glass mountain, and inside the mountain lived seven ravens, and possibly those might be her brothers. And the ravens gave her a little chicken bone that she put into her pocket, and they told her that it would fit into the lock of the glass mountain, and she could go in there and find her brothers. And so she said, they didn't know where the glass mountain was, but she set out to find it as she had searched for so long to find her brothers. A little while longer wouldn't matter. So she walked and walked, and there in the distance, she saw shining in the sunlight what 
could only be a glass mountain. And each day it got closer and closer until finally she found herself right there at the base of that beautiful glass mountain. And there, just as the, as the stars had told her, was a little door, and she reached into her pocket, but she had lost the little chicken bone. She looked all around her. It was nowhere to be seen. How was she to unlock the door? Well, in her pocket, she had brought with her a little knife. So she cut off her pinky, which fit exactly into the door, just as the chicken bone would have. And sure enough, the door to the glass mountain opened. And she covered her wound with her napkin. And she went in to the glass mountain. Can you imagine what that would be like to walk inside a glass mountain and see outside the sun shining? but everything so still and quiet. She walked up the stairs that she found before her. Inside she went, and she came upon a strange little man who seemed surprised to see her at first. But when she explained she was looking for her brothers, he said, oh, my lord, ravens live here. Perhaps they are the brothers that you seek. And he brought her to a little room where a long table was set and he, on, at each place with a little plate. And the funny little man placed some bread on each plate. And with the plates was a little goblet, of, and he, in each goblet he poured some fresh water. And in the last goblet she placed the ring she had brought with her. And then she went and hid behind the door. She waited, oh, so long it seemed she waited. When would she see her brothers finally after all this time? When by the window she heard a flapping of wings, and in the window came each one of her brothers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They were all there. Oh, she couldn't speak yet. She was so excited. Each of them went to their plate, and they began to eat the bread. And one of the ravens said, this bread. It tastes a little strange because you see after the funny little man had placed each piece of bread on the plates and filled each goblet with water she had tasted a bit of the bread and she had drunk a bit of the water. And then they drank their water and they said hmm this water also has a strange flavor. Someone has been here. And then their feathers flapping they chattered among themselves. Could she be here? Do you think she found us? And she couldn't stand it anymore. And she jumped out from her hiding, hiding place behind the door. She said, I'm here. I'm here, my brothers. I'm here. And they held her close in their wings. And they all wept together. And soon they took on the form of her seven lost brothers. And together the eight children left the glass mountain and went home back to their mother and father who had been waiting for them for so very long. And they all lived happily ever after. <laughs>